Today we're going to run through the installation of the Ultra HDMI mod kit by Retroactive. So first things first, let's just power up the console and make sure it all works. We're all working and we've got Donkey Kong running. All right, so. All right, so let's pull this all apart. Move all the parts out of the way. Um, okay. Flip it over. Um, you're going to need a game bit tool, uh, 4.5 millimeter. And you just go around and take out all the game bit screws around the case. Okay, so with that all done, just lift the feet off as well. Um, tip it upside down. Let's get those screws out. And then we can just lift the lid. It comes up like that, nothing's attached. So we'll just put that aside. Um, this one's a little bit dirty actually, so we're going to give this a clean while we're here and um, get it all nice and sparkling again and just get all that dust and junk out of there. Uh, ultimately the board is going to sit down down in there, um, sort of underneath the connector, sort of on that lower side, so that's what we're aiming for. Uh, but first thing, first we need to pull this apart and uh, lift the board out. Okay, so at this point, before you take the screws out, you just gotta kind of note there are different types. Um, so you got the silver ones up here on the connector, basically the, the kind of goldy, brassy colored ones um, running around the board. Uh, the black two ones are here on this uh, connector, small ones on, on the expansion slot. Um, so yeah, there's a few different types of screws, so uh, keep that in mind when you're pulling all this apart. Uh, these ones are bigger heads on them and uh, you know, put them all back where they came from. Uh, the whole thing will lift out. So this, uh, this bit of metal here is already loose, so that comes off the front. The rear will lift out the plastic, and then the whole board will come out like so. Um, we'll come back to that case in a minute to cut the hole. Now let's flip this guy over, take off the rear or the underside tray like so. And there you go. That whole top board will just separate. This one may have actually been lifted out before because these pads are quite stuck down to the chips. They're like heat sink conductive pads. Um, so if yours is a bit stuck, just sort of, you know, hold the board on either side and just put a bit of gentle pressure on, on this on this end of things and it should lift up pretty easily. So we'll put that aside um, and then we're left with the board. So let's have a look at our revision. It's up here at the top, NUS CPU P03-1. As this is a PAL revision, um, the layout's a little bit different. So if I zoom in, uh, the part we're ultimately going to solder the, um, the finer end of the ribbon to is down there on the board, that lower via down there. Okay, so let's get on with this and do a test fit of the board and do our physical cutting and mods to the case. So just open the packet up. Um, we probably should remove that. So it's going to sit about there. So we need to cut the back plastic. Okay, so I'll just mark that and I'll start my cuts and we'll file it down really carefully. So how wide is that connector? Well, that matches my file. So that's, you know, my file is just a bit smaller, which is perfect. So, okay, that's gonna work out really well. Right, so the way to do this is to just sit the board in, 
settle on the position and just mark the edges very carefully with just the blade just so you know where where to start and stop the cut. Okay, then take the board out of the way because you don't want to be slipping and damaging the board. Uh, and then we've got our marks. So I'll now just go ahead and very carefully cut that out. And I'm not going to do this on camera because uh, it's just too hard to film this up close. Um, and use, you know, tools at the same time. I don't want to slip and damage the case or my fingers. So we'll do that now off camera and I'll come back with the result. Okay, so we're getting pretty close now. Um, the idea is to get this to sit uh, completely flush across the top um, so that the Rear mount plastic will then sit on top and uh, you know everything squishes together nicely. So we're really close uh, So I'm just going to finish that off with a, a little bit more filing um, And get that to sit perfect So I'll take that out again Just make sure we get it nice and flat and straight so and when you think you've got it right, go ahead and mount the uh, multi out just on top, sandwich it down and just, uh, you know, really check that you've got it right. So I think you've got to focus on that. Yeah, it's probably all I can do today. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that result. Uh, it's quite neat and tidy and we should be able to get the connector in and out. That's it for the filing and the cutting. So obviously, you know, we're going to wash all this now so we get all the dust and stuff out, but um, the amount of material that came out was only just a, you know, a small amount of powdered sort of plastic after I'd cut it. So uh, it, it is quite soft, this stuff. It's only made of um, uh, ABS. So really just take your time and just with a, a normal little small file, just, just cut it really slowly and carefully because you'll be surprised how quick it actually does cut. Okay then, so as the board sort of sits in place, it's gonna rock across this bit of uh, uh, uneven plastic. So what we do is we put a bit of foam down into this corner, um, which actually sticks to the underside of the board on there, uh, inside that rectangle. And that way we get a bit more support out of the board when it's in place. So basically just get yourself the, uh, the included bit of um, foam Peel off the backing and put that in place. Like that. We can still access the uh, pads if we need to. And then that will sit in. Yeah, and it gets gets support on that on that edge there. So that's uh, that's all good. Okay, so with that stuff done, uh, let's move on to the ribbon and solder it onto the board. So there's a couple of um, you know loose parts of the ribbon which go to different parts of the board, but basically we're sitting it you know right there. So if you have a close look, uh, we've got the main chip in the middle, and with with Nintendo at the top, so looking down this way, um, we're, we're interested in the right hand side of the chip where it says one down there on the on the chip. Um, and if you look really closely, where I'm pointing. Uh, with the edge of this, not that one. Uh, there's a white dot on the board and we're going for the one just inside that. So it's gonna be a little bit hard to do this. It's quite delicate. Um, we sort of need to position it and sit it about there. Okay, so the first thing we should do is spray the board with isoprop and just get a small brush and just clean this area quite well. Clean those pins. We're also going to do, uh, we're going to solder to the back of these capacitors, so we'll clean that. Um, I think we're actually going to solder down, down here on the board, so we'll give that a quick clean. There's a lot of vias on the board right next to those pins. Now, I don't think we're meant to be soldering to those at all, so um, the underneath of the ribbon actually has exposed contacts, as you can see there. So. 
I think we're going to put some captain tape or something on that board to protect it and then just solder to the pins of the chip. So I've got some uh, Kapton tape, which is like, you know, heat resistant sort of tape. Um, just wait for this isoprop to dry. And we'll put a bit of tape on the board and lay our ribbon on top and see how we go. We'll probably tape the ribbon down as well. Uh, we'll tape it across here or something. And hopefully then we can solder it easily. Okay, so I've just put a bit of tape on the board. Uh, I'm just gonna press that down. And then just with some big dirty scissors, just cut that off like that. Tuck that down. So in preparation for putting this on, I've actually just put a bit of Kapton tape across it and I've just very gently tinned up the, the pins. So this is sort of as close as I can get you. Um, so with a little bit of solder tinned up on those pins, um, I now just go through each one with a fine tip soldering iron and try and complete the little uh, the, the pins. So I've actually done the very first one or the very last one. Uh, so let's continue on. Okay, so with that difficult part, I think done, um, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we need to now just connect up the, the other two uh, small ribbons, um, which is this one here. I've already started to bend that and that one there. They're both just connecting to the back side of these capacitors to pick up some voltage. Uh, this one here is 3.3 volts and this one's five. Um, I think it just feeds the circuit. Uh, and then we'll do this one. So in preparation, um, I would just add a little tiny bit of solder down on that pad. Okay, so the final part is to attach this longer piece of ribbon uh, to a VR on the board. Now there's multiple locations. Um, being that this is a PAL board, uh, mine's probably different to yours if you're doing this in America uh, in an NTSC region. Basically mine is that one down there, that, that bottom VR, if you can see that with my knife. Uh, not the top one, but the bottom one. So I'm just gonna scratch that a little bit to get rid of the solder mask if there's any on there and also just prepare it for some solder. So my plan is to put a leg through that, like a, a resistor leg or something, uh, just to make it easier to attach to. So as always, add a bit of flux. Um, I do actually have a resistor here. We're just gonna use the leg, poke it through and then try and solder, and solder it into place and cut it off. So we'll put that in place. There we go, it goes right through. Perfect. Uh, add a bit of solder to that and we should be good to go. So if you look at the underside, um, that's come through. Let's just trim that off. Yep. All right, so we're gonna have to obviously test this. I don't know how good that is. Um, let's just trim that off. Let's add a little bit of solder in advance to our wire, or our leg, to sort of tin that up a little bit. And then put our ribbon on. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a zoomed in shot because um, as I was soldering it, it was, it's actually very hard to get a shot of that without my head getting in the way. Um, so this is about as close as I can get with this camera. Um, the focus looks pretty good right now. And you can get an idea of how mine ended up. So they're butted right up against the pins, um, sitting as flat as possible. And I just dragged the solder. Um, so from, from this way across, so, I just grabbed the soldering iron. Um, so basically, look how big that looks under the under the lens. So uh, 
kind of heat the pin and drag out um, and that worked pretty well so you know I kind of dragged in a little bit to spread the solder at the very start but really just kind of want to join it um, kind of on the very tip like that and it seems to work okay so yeah it's a really fiddly job this one I wouldn't recommend it to a novice at all uh, it's quite challenging and the caps turned out like that so we just took the power off those caps and of course we put our feed down there on that bottom via for a power board so that's pretty much the installation guys that's the job done uh, I'm gonna now reassemble and we'll give this a test okay so I've already started to bend up these ribbons um, it looks like where there's these little notches I think you can see that uh, that's sort of the indicator of where to bend basically you want it to run up the board here and not get squashed by the side uh, ground plane of the lid so you just give it a bit of a pinch um, then it's going to come up here and wrap under the board so you kind of want to clear that area as well and it looks like there's a nice it looks like that's the place to kink it uh, through there as well so that's what I'm doing and then it'll just run like that and it'll wrap under the board so we'll go ahead and do this let's put the rear shield back on I think we put our foam on at the moment be, right now because this uh, this pin area is what's going to be um, kind of presented to the board it's going to potentially dig in so we just put a bit of foam on there to add some pressure to the board um, now we grab our case um, I've just refitted the uh, little screw clippy things now I might just pull the board out for a second and connect the ribbon first so we open up the little gate on the side of the board which is it's already open um, and pin side is towards the board so yep so that's fine that's all going to wrap underneath so we'll put that in and very carefully lock that into place okay yep that looks that looks good so fold it underneath like that sit it back down the board sit our board in place and we sort of end up with something like that pretty straightforward there you go that all works pretty well so the board's securely back in um, yeah the ribbon comes up sorry if you didn't see that and it wraps under and locks in so do it in that sort of order okay then put our multi out plastic back in place <clears throat> sits like that now let's just check our position yeah that looks great happy with that and we could theoretically just test it right now but um, we may as well put the top on and put pressure on the board and um, put in its final position just in case we get a short or something so let's just go ahead and sit this on uh, I believe that's just going to sit like that it's going to come out that hole okay so with those basic screws in let's give it a test um, let's plug this whole thing in and we'll see what happens we'll do both composite video and HDMI and we'll just see well first of all we should really yeah we should test if they still work um, so our HDMI goes in nicely uh, I'm just using a standard HDMI connector with an adapter down to the mini size so standard HDMI female in uh, HDMI mini male on that end so that's probably what you need to do if you're just like me you don't really have the mini cables lying, lying around just pick up an adapter that one was five bucks I've had that for quite a while so it's, it's pretty handy we'll plug in our composite as well um, I think that's it so let's give this thing a shot uh, my monitor's ready to roll and we're on so okay composite still works and looks as crap as it always does 
something else to note on these um, on these boards is that there's actually a little status LED down there. So I'll just turn it off. Um, and that gives us um, a bit of a self-diagnostic mode. So it, it, it flashes once, I believe. Uh, and then if there's a problem, it keeps flashing. So let's have another look at that. Yeah, there we go. I think you can see that. And so once is a good sign. Now let me set my monitor to HDMI. Okay. We'll leave everything connected as is and we'll watch that LED. And a bit of a delay, oh, here we go. Okay, well the sound is way better. Yep, that's all working. Pretty straightforward actually, it's uh... All right, cool, looks good. Donkey Kong 64. Uh, let me just turn the volume down on that. Turn that off. Uh, so if we come over to our controller and we go back to our instructions, it says the on-screen display is um, left, how do you do this? I hate these controllers, left, Z, D-pad right, um, C right, and R trigger. Okay, cool, there we go. So there is the on-screen display, so that all works. Um, now the self-test mode is in about self-test. So about self-test, okay, there we go. Problems found, zero. No wiring issues found, excellent. Well, that's a great start. Um, game must output both audio and video to confirm wiring. Yeah, well, we've done that. So we've got video and audio before. I've just turned the uh, speakers off. So that looks pretty good. Um, I won't go right through the menu because, um, you know, you guys can uh, check your own out, but a um, quick look and something I quite like is um, the de-blur. So that's a, it's a good feature for the N64 because these things are pretty blurry. Um, so no or auto always all plus int. I'll have to read up on how they work, but I think auto is probably probably enough. So yeah, I think, I think always mode is pretty good. Um, yeah, cool, there's some good options through here. HDMI, okay, so it does some, does this from different reses. Cool, 1080. Refresh rate, not sure if I could accept 60, but we'll find out. There you go, 1080p, 60. Oh, that's good that it's got a little, um, did it work sort of menu, and that's really, really cool. I don't know what direct mode's all about, so I won't play with that. But um, yeah, we're looking good. So this is just a computer monitor in front of me. Nothing, it's not like a, it's not a TV, but we're getting a fantastic picture and uh, yeah, it looks really good. So one more thing is uh, the instructions say we should be able to bring up the on-screen menu uh, with the game out. So I'm just gonna pull that back out, flick on the console, it's got power. Um, grab our controller and do this ridiculous combination again. Uh, that one. Hey, there we go. So I'll just flick you back to the screen. Okay, so that worked and it says in the instructions it's important to do that. Um, you'll see a black screen but still be able to bring up the OSD. Uh, this exercises the alternate controller polling. Okay, so it's, it's just like an extra test. So um, that's cool. Uh, run the self-test. Yeah, so problems found, none. Yeah, you must need the game for the diagnostics to work. Okay, so we did that before. Uh, everything seems good. Uh, you know, it wasn't too hard, really. Uh, it, it is, but it isn't. It's just a very fiddly job. Um, but it's, I wouldn't say it's that difficult. It's probably medium difficulty, but you do need to have some pretty steady uh, soldering skills and a steady hand, so. I used um, a, mic a small microscope here as an aid to help me do it. 
it helps quite a lot. It's got an LED light at the bottom, and uh, you know this is digital microscope which goes up to my monitor. It just helps me confirm things like um, are the pins shorted? Is there any solder bridges and things like that? But I, I solder it with my eye and then just confirm it with the microscope because you have to get it so close that it's hard to work with it um, when it's sort of in the way like that. So pick yourself up one of those. They're only like $20 from China or not even that, like $15, um, which is pretty amazing really. And uh, yeah, I think that, um, they, that helps. It's an extra tool to add to your toolkit and it helps you tackle jobs like this. So right guys, you know, thanks for watching. Um, that's it for this video. So um, follow along if you want to try yours at home. Uh, the instructions are pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.